How can we make NFTs that make sense? You have different types of NFTs. You have the NFT PFP project, Board Ape, etc., etc. All of those projects actually live upon hype. If you lose hype, you lose value. How does an artwork has value? Because of the artists who created it. And also the scarcity, the artists end up dying. So no more artworks from that artist. And this is how the value is, is actually being defended. Look at Axie Infinity. I love the game. The game is very fun. But at the end of the day, the first people that got in get value from the last people that get in. So if they stop growing, the value stops coming. So at the end of the day, they need to have constant, constant, constant growth to get to a point uh, where it does not fall. This is Ponzi. Dear crypto community, blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonite, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we are here live from Paris, blockchain week in front of the actual Paris Stock Exchange, the former one with incredible people and speaking of incredible people, Reda Berelli, the CEO of the Key Foundation and Club, personal friend of mine, an incredible project on the Cosmos chain. Thank you so much for coming, brother. Thank you for inviting me. Reda, you're a legend in the crypto space. You've done so many papers on tokenomics and cool stuff. But first, if you'd like to kick off and tell us, why are you doing what you do? A simple question about your love for this space. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. I'm really happy to be able to share why we're doing this. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have created many businesses in the traditional startup industry. And I thought there was something wrong about how we share value with people. And I thought that cryptocurrencies, programmable money, was the best way to be able to create a system that incentivizes all the actors of an ecosystem, which led to the creation of our cryptocurrency called Key. Fantastic. And your contribution has been incredible. You love tokenomics, right, Reda? You wrote, I believe, a blog in 2017. Yeah, it was around 2018. 2018, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About what are real tokenomics, hard tokenomics versus soft, et cetera, et cetera. So why don't we share with the community the evolution of tokenomics as you've seen them from your eye? Absolutely. I think that many things were wrong in the way uh, crypto was created. It's like a, a constant uh, uh, run for getting value and, and grabbing value. And so like it's, it's, it's much of a Ponzi scheme for m most of the tokens that we saw uh, with very few utility other than just making money uh, uh, in a fiat settlement uh, way. So I was thinking about how can we actually create token economics that makes sense. And when we talk about token economics, it's not about distribution of tokens, how, how many percentage the team has, how many the investors has, how it is distributed to the, to the, to the holders and investors. That's not token economics. That's how you distribute the supply. Token economics is how you create utility for a token that actually creates value into holding it, but also creates value in the long term. Why do I hold a token? Do I get benefits from holding it? Uh, and by holding it, I'm actually reducing the, the, the supply circulating in the market, which means that less supply, more value for the same demand. And I'd like to say that I'm kind of a, of a uh, philosophy uh, of Milton Friedman and Fisher's uh, uh, analysis and like MV equals PQ, which is like the formula of, of the token economics. And a lot of economists were against what Milton Friedman was, was saying and because it was not easy to prove it in the actual economies uh, for the last centuries because things took a lot of time to actually 
impact the markets and the value of currencies. In crypto, everything is fast. So basically, the value of that equations, actually, you can see it in a few months, in a few weeks. So actually, I think that Milton Friedman was right in a way he was seeing value of a currency in a market that creates uh, products, sells products, and has holders, investors, institutions. And that's what we try to do with the key uh, in the ecosystem of the key foundation. How do we create utility with inflation on the supply of the token? So providing incentives for people to hold to get the value from the inflation, but also providing incentives for people to hold and stake the token to benefit from services from products in the ecosystem. And one of our products is called Club, which is a new private bank. And to be a member of Club, you need to hold those tokens. And to get better services, you need to hold more of those tokens. So it's a utility that has no incidence and not linked to the value of the token. So basically, you have to hold those tokens. And when you hold them, you get those services. So this is something that we're working on. And we have other utilities that are going to be built. And we have some nice announcement to come in a few days. Fantastic. And speaking of tokenomics, thank you so much for clarifying that. When I see when I see pitch deck saying tokenomics, but it's just a distribution strategy, it's like, that's not tokenomics. It's just tokenomics. That's, that's just bullshit. a ratio of yeah, getting what? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And, but going back to like the first tokenomics models, you know, in the beginning, as you know, with blockchains, it was just rewarding the people who validate yeah. and getting gas fees, right? So that was how it was interacted, very simple model. Like, were there some specific coins and tokens where you felt along the way, wow, that, that utility right there is quite ingenious? So loyalty. loyalty, loyalty tokens. And this is basically the usage that we have at Club. Uh, the key is a loyalty token in Club. So if you hold it, you get benefits. And those benefits are also uh, re re rewarding you in key. So basically, it's um, not a real closed loop because it's a closed loop with the rewards and everything that happens in club. But at the end of the day, people come from outside value to buy those keys to benefit from those services. And this is a great usage. How do you reward loyalty? When you're a brand, you reward loyalty by providing points. Those points could be replaced by brand tokens. And, and this is something that we're working on. And I think that the future of how we materialize the loyalty of customers for a brand will be through brand tokens. That makes a lot of sense. Loyalty, I think, is one of the best analogies, like mileage points or whatever kind of yeah program that shows that you're dedicated and you're using Absolutely. You know, their technology or their services. So if you have a friend from TradFi, because you work in TradFi before, and saying like these tokens have absolutely no value, is that how you explain it to them? Loyalty points is how it works? Like How do you convey that to people who think that tokens are useless and Bitcoin is the only one, for instance? I think that Bitcoin, uh, what, what's interesting with Bitcoin is that it's, it's the largest Ponzi token in this ecosystem, but it's the first one. And I think that provides him that value, uh, that maximalist value, because people actually just want to hold Bitcoin. And that's, it's a religion. So I, 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 I will not challenge the value of Bitcoin. Yet, for the other tokens, uh, you need to look at the utility. Loyalty is one of the utility. You also have infrastructure value. Though, infrastructure value without usage has no value. Uh, so you look at AMMs, uh, basically AMMs that uh, use their own tokens, governance token, to pay for transaction fees, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, if there is usage and volume on those AMMs, then the token will have value. And at the end of the day, you look at the quantity of the, of the transactions, but also of the commissions that are taken, and then you can see how much value is get, getting poured into that token. That's another kind of value. So at the end of the day, how a token can be used as a fuel for a service? And we get back to classic business and classic industry. So do people need your assets to do something in their life, to make their life better, to use uh, a service, to grow, to, to, to make money. And, and this is how you look at the intrinsic value of an asset. That makes so much sense. You know, an architecture or infrastructure without usage is like a restaurant with no customers. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It doesn't at the end work. of the day, it's customers. <laughs> yeah. Do people see value in something and need your asset to do something? That's the only, like, like the baseline of creating value. And so in terms of infrastructure, since we're talking about that, you chose Cosmos. Absolutely. So there are many options out there, EVM compatible, non-compatible, L1s, L0s. Why did you decide to go for Cosmos? For those watching out there, which is a layer zero, you can build your own blockchain with your own rules. Yeah. But what made you fall in love with Cosmos? 
Actually, we like the fact of living in our own home and having our own sovereign chain, being paying our fees with our own token is something that was actually uh, the only way for us to, to, to go forward. Um, and that was why we created our own chain. Then the second thing, and like it's about philosophy. You have your own sovereign chains, but at the same time, they can be interconnected with other chains. And Cosmos has been the first protocol that actually standardized the IBC, inter-blockchain communication. And it went in production last year, and we saw the explosion of value in the ecosystem because now sovereign chains are communicating with other chains and you can have composability between chains of the Cosmos ecosystem, which is amazing. You look at Osmosis, which is an app-specific chain, an AMM, uh, the biggest DEX in the, in the Cosmos ecosystem. And it's amazing how you can see hundreds of millions of dollars of value being exchanged between sovereign chains and Osmosis being that cornerstone of the Cosmos ecosystem for financial exchanges. And you were talking about staking earlier as one of the main utilities. Cosmos has airdrops from projects that actually run. Isn't that that's a really strong utility, right? Relative to any <laughs> that's not, chain. That's not utility. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, it's a, airdrops. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a feature. It's an it's advantage. A, it's, it's, it's a feature. It's, a it's feature. like yeah, like many many some tokens have value just because people believe that by having that token they will get airdrops from other projects. But at the end of the day, you don't know the quality of those projects. That's true. So you that's know true. nothing. So basically, yeah. that could lead also to bad behavior from chains pushing fake projects so just so that people ah. will buy their tokens to benefit from airdrops. And this is wrong. At the end of the day, what's important is infrastructure usage. And this is one of the interesting things that Cosmos is pushing forward. And with the last Theta upgrade, now it's live in the infrastructure level. So it's interchain security. So that's interesting. Because by holding and staking Atoms, which is the native token of, of Cosmos, you will get value from all the projects that will use the shared security of the validators of the Cosmos ecosystem. That's value. So you benefit from projects that are secured by the validators of Cosmos. That's a utility for Atom. But it's optional. It's not like Polkadot, where if you want to be a parachain, benefit from the interchain security, then like you need to have that auction and get into the set, etc., etc. In Cosmos, you can have your own validators or you can use the shared security. That's a really interesting angle because everyone I talk to, they say Cosmos or Atom token is amazing because I get airdrops and no other L1 or L0 infrastructure gives that to me. But you're giving a really interesting new angle, the cons of having this type of setup, absolutely, right? Which absolutely. is very interesting. Yeah. So tell us, Key Foundation, you have your infrastructure, you have also your business club. Yeah. For those looking out there and who own X-Key tokens or maybe do not have X-Key tokens yet, are there any interesting news that you could potentially <laughs> share with us? I can share with you uh, a very important news. We've been working on this for the last few weeks, months, uh, in making the keychain an ecosystem for bridging TradFi with DeFi. But how do we do that? So we had to make the keychain a true complete chain to be able to build products on top of it. So we've been integrating Cosmos and we have the testnet running uh, with Cosmos and we have our first DeFi product living on top of the keychain. So we have Cosmon, which is the first NFT play to earn project of the Cosmos ecosystem with a very sustainable model where when people buy those NFTs, actually there is value that is generated in the ecosystem that is provided to the players of the play to earn. Uh, nothing like all, most of the Ponzi schemes that you can see in the other NFT play to earn. So Basically, this is our first product, but we also have an AMM that will, will be coming on top of the keychain. We will also have a minter for NFTs and, and, and to CW20 tokens. And you'll also have, in, in a few months, something related to the NFTs that are minted on the keychain. So yeah, this, this is a big announcement for us because we are now becoming that hub that brings institutions and traditional investors into the world of DeFi in a permissioned way, but also a secure way. That's fantastic. And you just mentioned there are many flaws with the token economics of NFT platforms or exchanges these days. Can you go a little bit deeper into that? You Absolutely. Said, you said unlike NFT token utilities. Please ask more. So yeah. you said this is no bullshit. Yeah, no bullshit. Thing. No bullshit. So <laughs> Look at Axie Infinity. I love the game. The game is very fun. But at the end of the day, the first people that got in get value from the last people that get in. So if they stop growing, 
yeah. the value plateaus. the value stops coming it's actually it's not it won't stagnate yeah, it, it will fall actually, yeah. because people will start yeah. selling so at the end of the day they need to have constant 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 growth to get to a point uh where it does not fall this is ponzi i'm sorry i'm sorry to say that so you need to be able to create a sustainable way of bringing that value and making it grow to be able to share it with the, the ecosystem of players. And this is the whole thinking that we've been having with Cosmon and with also all of our vision of how can we make NFTs that make sense. You have different types of NFTs. You have the NFT PFP project, Board Ape, etc., etc. All of those projects actually live upon hype. If you lose hype, you lose value. Lose value. How does an artwork has value? Because of the artists who created it. And also the scarcity. The artist ends up dying. So no more artworks from that artist. And this is how the value is, is actually being defended. And the artist doesn't need to paint new things on top of it, right? He just Absolutely. keeps it and it sustains its Absolutely. value, right? Absolutely. Hey, so, hey. Film <laughs> yeah, we have someone bombing the <laughs> <laughs> interview. We're literally filming. <laughs> <laughs> from Gemini, actually. Hi. Hi. Gemini. Nice to meet you. Right, uh... Okay, so you found this problem with regards to tokenomics for NFTs that are not sustainable over yeah. time, right? So how are you changing that to make it sustainable and a strong utility rather than a soft one? I think that most of it is going to be our secret sauce. But basically, the money that is generated from the sale of uh, the NFTs is actually not used to buy Lamborghinis and, and mansions. Um, it's used in the smartest way. Hopefully you'll tease us more with that in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank you. Thank Good you having you on the show. Yeah. Guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and blast that bell notification to get access to more of these timeless interviews. Today we had one of the legends here in Paris, Reda Bereli. Don't forget to follow him as well. Join us every Wednesday, premiering at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. See you next week, guys.